All right, here we are, you guys, with our second video with Ben. Super excited to bring this one to you. We're doing the squat now. We just finished up with all the coaching cues leading up into a conventional or a sumo deadlift. Now Ben's gonna show you guys how to squat with proper technique and all the different cues to look out for. Pay close attention. This guy drops all kinds of great knowledge and information, everything from how he sets up with his feet to the bar placement and the mindset, and even how he talks about his core getting ready before he gets under the squat bar. So pay close attention. Got a great video for you guys check it out so everything we talked about for the deadlift or a lot of things we talked about for the deadlift are still going to apply for the squat so you still want to keep that neutral spine position you still want to make sure that the load is balanced evenly across all the, all the major muscle groups that are involved in the lift however the squat's a lot harder for a lot of people than the deadlift is because picking something up off the ground pretty natural movement you do that probably dozens of times a day Squatting with a weight on your back, not so common, right? You're probably not gonna do that in your day-to-day -day life. On top of that, you have a lower margin for error because we talked about how in the deadlift, you're a little bit too far forward, you're a little bit too far back. You're not gonna be using your muscles effectively. You might be a little bit off balance. In the squat, when you get a little bit off balance, you're probably gonna fall on your face or on your butt. So that makes it a little bit more intimidating for a lot of people. The nice thing is, no matter what your body type is, you can always find something that's gonna be really efficient for you. So my body type is not all that great for squatting. I have long legs, short torso. It makes it pretty difficult. So I have to kind of contort my body to get in a good position. You might have better leverages and you can kind of take the squat naturally. And if you do, that's great. But even if you don't, even if you find it kind of pretty challenging at first, just be patient with yourself. Take some time. You're gonna to have to find what works for you. Again, you're gonna to have to experiment with different stances, different grips, different styles. And we'll talk about that. But there, you will be able to find something that is efficient. So to start out with, you wanna make sure that you're addressing the bar evenly. So you definitely don't wanna to be too off balance. I'll, if I'm, I'll just exaggerate real quick. If I'm way over here, obviously I'm gonna have problems when I'm squatting. You wanna make sure you're directly in the middle. So if you have a bar that happens to have a, a ring right in the middle, you're set. You can just get lined up right with that ring. Most bars don't. Most bars only have their knurling out to a certain grip. And in that case, you're gonna to have to go based on your grip. So that's how I started the squat. I'm gonna take my grip first. Personally, I use a very narrow grip. Generally, the narrower your grip, the better position you're gonna have on your back. So if you can get real, real narrow, and usually it's women that can, if you can get real, 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 real narrow, you're gonna have a very nice shelf on your upper back. It's made by your delts. Very nice shelf to hold the bar. If you can't, a lot of guys who lack shoulder flexibility, they have to go super wide. And that can make it a little bit more difficult to hold on the bar. You're really gonna have to focus on keeping your upper back tight. So to start out with, you need to find the ideal grip and that's gonna be the narrowest you can go without hurting your shoulders for most people. So for me, that's about right here. If you're different, it's fine, just roll with it. So from here, just like in the deadlift where we wanna engage our lats and I do that by picking my arms up, here I'm gonna hold onto the bar and I'm gonna pull down, just like I was doing a pull down. Obviously the bar's not gonna move because it's on these pins, but it's gonna help me engage my lats. It's gonna help me keep a flat back throughout the entire lift. From there, once I've got these two set, make sure just reminder to myself, keep that neutral spine, big deep breath in my diaphragm, squeeze the abs, squeeze the glutes, and then I almost pull myself under the bar. When I do that, flip my grip. So I'm gonna talk about my grip in a second. You can see it's a little bit different than a lot of people's. But first, I'm gonna talk about the position of the bar on your upper back. So there's kind of a variety of different places that you can hold it. You'll see some people, usually Olympic lifters, people who squat with a very narrow stance, they'll keep the bar high on their back on top of their traps. That looks like this. See, it's way up on my traps right here. When the bar is way up high, it's gonna allow you to keep your torso upright more easily. In general, for the squat, the more upright your torso, the better. However, some people have a lot, really, really strong lower back, really, really strong posterior chain, their uh, quads maybe don't work quite as well. And for those people, they're just gonna feel more comfortable when they lean forward, and that's okay. When you tend to prefer to lean forward more in the squat, you want a lower bar position. Instead of being up on your traps, right by your neck, it's gonna be down on the base of your shoulders. So that looks like this. You can see, I start up with it on my traps and then I push the bar back until I can find that sweet spot right on the top of my shoulders. From here, generally, I, I think most people are gonna feel a little bit more comfortable in this position. The bar doesn't quite have as, uh, quite have a, as much of a shelf to sit on, but at the same time, you're able to engage more of your posterior chain, your lower back to stabilize the bar, stabilize your body. So a lot of people feel a little bit more comfortable that way. 
But again, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna have to try both really to find which works for you. You also probably noticed how my grip looks a little bit funky. I'm one of those guys who has terrible, terrible shoulder mobility. I cannot really get under a bar like this. It's just, I can't get any further down than this. My shoulders don't bend that way. They should, I should do more shoulder mobility work, but they just don't. So what I do instead is compensate with elbow flexibility because if I can bend my elbows way, way back, I don't have to move my shoulders much, right? Shoulders are basically in the same position they were when they started. So to help me do that, when I take my grip, I drop my pinky under the bar and I drop my thumb under the bar. And that allows me to get my wrist almost all the way up without really having any pressure on the actual wrist joint. When I do that, that means I have to support the bar entirely with my back. My hand's not really doing anything because otherwise I got all that load right on my fingers and that's, that's not a good look. So if you're not comfortable holding the bar on your back, that's probably not something you want to do. You probably want to make sure that you've got your whole hand wrapped pretty firmly around the bar so you can use your hands to help keep you stable. But if you are pretty comfortable and you do lack shoulder flexibility and want to bring your grip in a little bit more, that's a tool that you can use to help you be able to do that more easily. So we've got kind of your upper back position. We've got your setup, right? With your grip. From here, a couple different things. First, keeping your upper back tight. Keeping your upper back tight is more than just having your lats activated. So you have a bunch of muscles that are gonna run from your shoulders all the way across your back. And you really need to think about squeezing those together in order to be able to make sure that you can hold the bar in the right position throughout the entire range of motion. What I see a lot happen with a lot of people, they'll get set under the bar, they'll get nice and tight in this upper back, almost kind of shrugging up. Then as soon as they start to go down, they lose all that. And all of a sudden the bar is rolling on their back, they're falling forward and everything kind of goes to shit. That's a very important thing that's also very difficult for a lot of people because just like with the lats, you can't really, it's harder to see those upper back muscles working. You can't really control them as well a lot of times because they're not as well developed and they don't really have the potential to be developed like your traps do, right? You can shrug your traps really easily, but all those other supporting muscles like your rotator cuff muscles, your rhomboids, they just don't have the potential to get that big. So it makes it more challenging. And again, you need to find some cues that are gonna allow you to engage those muscles pretty easily without having to think about it a lot, a lot, a lot, or a long time in the middle of a lift. I think the easiest cue for a lot of people is to think about pulling the bar apart or squeezing the bar over your back. So trying to bend the bar just like it was, I don't know, a piece of string or something that you could bend over your back, that's gonna help you to engage those muscles. Personally, that doesn't actually work for me. I like to shrug up and then pull down. And so shrugging up, I'm gonna tighten up everything that's in this upper back, and then when I pull down, I'm gonna kind of let my traps relax. I don't want tight traps like this. That's not gonna be able, that's not, that's gonna prevent me from using those muscles effectively. So I like to shrug up and then kind of pull down. And then the third thing you need to figure out before you even unrack the bar is what your stance is gonna be. So I think I mentioned earlier, I don't have a great stance for squatting. I don't have a great build for squatting. I usually take a pretty narrow stance so that I can really engage my quads and my lower back at the same time and just kind of use muscle to power through my inefficient leverages. That's really gonna depend on mostly the balance between your quads and your hamstrings. Are you more posterior chain dominant or are you more quad dominant? And how good are you about abducting your knees, abducting your hips? What I mean by that, some people can get in a great position. They can push their knees out real, real far. They can have their toes flared, 45 degrees, maybe even a little bit more, and they can go down like this and they feel great. I feel like my hips are gonna rip off, right? So I feel like everything from all the way here, all the way down here is just gonna rip right off the bone and it's gonna be terrible. So I can't do that comfortably. I certainly can't do that comfortably under load. I prefer to take a much more narrow stance with my feet straight ahead and I'm really pushing my, he pushing my knees forward over my toes. You know, hear a lot of people talk about how that's bad for your knees. It's not really true. It's not bad for your knees unless you're letting your weight shift forward onto your toes. That is bad. No matter what, you wanna make sure you keep your weight balanced over your midfoot, right? Right about here. And that way you're gonna make sure that you're not just engaging your quads, you're gonna be engaging all the muscles in your lower body. So I take a very narrow stance. I have my feet pointed straight ahead. Keep my weight over my midfoot, but I'm really pushing my knees forward. As you can see, my knee is about an inch or so in front of my toes, and that's a better position for me. That allows me to recruit everything really efficiently. Honestly, you're probably gonna be somewhere in the middle. Most people don't have a super narrow stance. Most people can't squat with their feet straight ahead and still be able to hit depth. Most people need a little bit of toe flare, 
and probably somewhere around a shoulder width stance, I think is probably the best bet for a lot of people. If you have great hip abduction, you might be able to go super wide, right? You'll see some guys go like this, where their feet are almost all the way out of the rack. And when they squat down, you know, really it's their hips are moving almost straight down. And that really minimizes the range of motion that they have to move the bar, which can make them, if, you, if you're strong in that position, that's probably the best way because you're not moving the weight as far, but you're still engaging all your muscles and it's gonna allow you to use more weight. So again, you're just gonna have to try and find which stance is right for you. Once you get set up and get under the bar, the unrack is probably the most important part of your squat. Just like the descent was the most important, important part of the deadlift, getting to the descent in the squat is the most important part of the squat. So I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna put everything together, pull my lats down, get that upper back tight, take my grip, get it right in the right position on my shoulders. Again, remind myself to get that good neutral spine brace. Deep breath in the diaphragm and just stand up. Now, I'm don't talk while you're squatting. I'm just gonna do that for demonstration purposes. Unrack is a part of the lift where a lot of people get really, really shaky. So I'm not gonna demonstrate, but some people, you'll see them, they're bouncing back and forth in the rack. They need to take 10 million steps to get out here, right? They're walking back, like going for a fucking stroll with the weight on their back or something. And first of all, that's dangerous. Second of all, dangerous, wasted energy. And third of all, it's almost impossible to find a good position if you're moving around that much. You wanna make your unrack as efficient as possible. You wanna be just far enough outside these uh, little pins so that you know you're not gonna hit them on your way down or your way up. But other than that, you wanna move as little as you possibly can under the weight. So the best way to do that, I'll demonstrate without the bar. You wanna start with your feet kinda of a little bit closer than you would normally because when they're a little bit closer, you're gonna have an easier time balancing and walking with the weight on your back if it's heavy weight, really challenging. So just a little bit, little bit narrower than whatever your stance would be normally. And then before you start to do anything, you're gonna slide your dominant foot back, right? So I, I'm a little bit more comfortable, I have a little bit better balance on my right foot. I'm gonna slide my right foot back until it's in the center of my body. I'm not picking this up, right? Not doing that, that's more movement and I'm more off balance when I have my one foot off the ground. So I'm sliding it back and sliding it to the center. When my foot's in the center like this, again, I have better balance. I can move this foot all the way, all over the place, and it's no problem. If I'm over here, right, if I slide straight back and I try to move here, now I'm a little bit off balance. If I try and come towards the center, now I'm a little bit off balance. So you wanna slide the foot into the middle of your body. Then, this foot can press pretty much do anything, and you're probably gonna have to pick it up because it's hard to slide another foot when you're already uh, kind of in a staggered stance. So you pick it up, and you're gonna find exactly where this foot would be when you're in your right stance. So this one, right in the center of my body, this is wherever I want my stance. So I want my stance like this, slide back, step back, and then I can just step with this foot. That kind of three, three part motion is gonna allow you to unrack even very heavy weight without losing any tightness, without losing any balance. Some people do prefer to just do a two-step walk back and they can move their foot straight back and then just take another step back. If you can do that, that's fine. Personally, I, I don't have the best balance and so I have to do the, I have to slide my, my dominant foot first. But if you're comfortable with two steps, that's fine. More than three steps, not okay. You're wasting energy. Obviously, it's not possible with one. So two or three steps, I prefer three. If two works for you, that's fine. Everything together again. So now I'm ready to squat. Head position is actually not as big a deal as I think people make it out to be. You wanna have a neutral spine, we talked about that before. Some people like looking up, they find helps them balance a little bit better, helps them keep a flat back. I prefer looking slightly down, some people look straight ahead. You don't wanna be looking straight down, you don't wanna be looking straight up, but basically anywhere in between is, is probably okay. When you initiate your descent, you want to keep your elbows under the bar for the entire lift. When your elbows go far back, that pushes you forward. If your elbows go too far forward, it's, it's kind of hard to get your elbows too far forward. So you want your elbows to be directly under the bar the entire lift. 
your torso more or less is gonna follow your elbows. If your elbows are pointing down, your torso is gonna be pointing up. That's what you want, okay? So try and keep that position as you descend. When you descend, it's gonna depend on your leverages, whether you like to push your, push your knees forward or sit back. So personally, I push my knees forward because I like to engage more quad than posterior chain. So when I descend, I'm keeping my weight over my midfoot, but I'm pushing my knees forward until I can hit depth. And then I'm gonna come up. We'll talk about the ascent a little bit later. Now some people, usually people who prefer a wider stance, prefer to push their butt back. Because of my torso, if I push my butt back, it's pretty ugly, but I'll show you what that looks like. You can see it makes me lean forward way, way more. Makes sense if you think about it, because I'm starting off more or less by tilting my torso forward, right? If I'm pushing my butt back. That's why I personally don't do it. If you have a longer torso, it might work better for you. It might help you to engage your posterior chain a little bit more. Both styles are perfectly fine. The important thing is that you're keeping balanced and that you're engaging all your muscles effectively. Effectively, it's gonna be different for every person. We've talked about this a lot by now, but there's no one right answer. So just keep that in mind. If somebody tells you, hey, this is the way you have to squat, it should probably be a red flag because there's no one right way for everyone. So the last big thing is the descent um, and keeping your muscles tight during the descent. That's gonna be almost identical for the deadlift. Again, for most people, the cue that works best is trying to spread the floor, pull the bar floor, floor, floor apart with your feet. That cue doesn't work for you. You might have to play around with some different ones. Um, you might have to think about pushing your heels back again against the ground. Obviously, in none of these cases are my feet gonna move. I do not want my feet to move. I'm just trying to keep my quads, my hamstrings, and my glutes all engaged eff effectively. If you struggle with that on the squat, the hip circle is a great tool, or just a band around your knees, great tool to help you do that. It's gonna force you to push your knees out, or else the band's gonna fall down around your ankles, you'll look silly. So it's gonna force you to keep your knees out, and generally, keeping your knees out is gonna force you to engage your posterior chain. The quads in the squat are pretty much always gonna work. It's, it's almost impossible to squat without working your quads at all. So you don't have to think about those quite as much. As long as you do those things, you hit depth effectively. So depth is when the crease of your hip is below your knee. Some people can't safely squat to that depth, and if, if that's you, that's, that's fine, right? Like, do what you can. Most people can squat at least that deep. And so as soon as you hit depth, you can kind of reverse that momentum. Some people like to bounce their squats. Some people get a lot more energy when they're going down really fast, right? And there's, if you're still able to stay tight like that, that's great. Most people, when they descend quickly, and I'll show you what that looks like too. When most people descend quickly, they lose tightness. You lose tightness, you lose balance. You're not as strong as you would be. But some people, some people have the ability to stay really tight and go down really quickly, and they can get some rebound out of the bottom. Almost like that. I'm not good at that at all. But hey, if you can do that and it works for you, that's fine. You probably saw in the last rep, I use a lot more of a controlled descent. And so for me, that allows me to stay tight, to reverse momentum without losing any of that tightness. That's the only cue that matters, only, only part that matters of how fast your descent is. Staying tight, staying balanced. That's really all that matters throughout the entire lift.